Hello Internet, my name is Patrick and this is Fringeworthy, a show where I talk to you about weird magic decks. And it's been a while. I've been spending the last six months or so finely tuning the deck that I ended up taking to GP Seattle for the Legacy main event. Now I'm not talking about that in this episode, that'll be next week. But this week I want to talk about something a little different, a deck that didn't quite work out. Now, first let's dive into the deck, and then afterwards we'll talk about some of the shortcomings it had. So here's the list that I came up with that I call Esper No Fun. The goal of the deck is to try and prevent your opponents from doing things that they usually do in Legacy, and it does have some problems that I'll get into as we go through the deck. So the first soft lock pieces we have here are three Leonin Arbiters, four Avon Mind Sensors, and four Shadow of Doubts. These are all ways to prevent our opponents from searching. The main goal is to try to get these down as early as possible to turn off fetch lands and other tutor effects. Next we have some of our other soft lock pieces in the form of Suppression Field and Notion Thief. Notion Thief is there specifically to deal with Brainstorm, make it very good for us and bad for our opponents, and Stifle is there to also stifle fetches or turn off any other activated abilities at least once. Lastly we've got some other miscellaneous removal in the form of Four Force of Wills, a uh, Fatal Push to deal with a single pesky creature if we've got one, and Path to Exile. Since we're already preventing our opponents from searching, this is a really good piece of removal for one white. Then we've got Supreme Verdict to deal with go-wide strategies or just flooded boards. It is a little bit of a downside because most of our soft lock pieces are on creatures. And then we also have Vindicate, which is our sort of versatile catch-all removal, which ended up being used a lot more as land destruction than I would have expected. Then, since we're in blue and we need to sometimes find the right cards, we've got Brainstorms and Ponders. Lands are where things get a little bit tricky. Because of money, I wasn't able to go for an all-fetchless build, though if you were crazy enough to actually try this, I would highly recommend it. Some of our search effects are symmetrical, and that means that fetches are very bad for us. Ideally though, you still want some for use with Brainstorm. Regardless, this is sort of what I had for my mana base, and I had some wastelands in here to deal with any actual dual lands that opponents get out. Now for the sideboard, I've got some Tormod scripts to deal with graveyard decks, mana maze to deal with some mid-range decks and combo decks, and also meddling mage. Meddling mage I use sort of as a catch-all when I'm early in figuring out the sideboard. If I can use it, I always put some in. Later on I may swap it out for more narrow cards, but I didn't quite get there this time with this deck, so I kept them in until the very end. We've also got Back to Basics to further punish greedy land bases, Teferi's Response specifically to deal with Rashadden Port, and Parallax Tide because you can remove 5 lands and then stifle the Leave the Battlefield trigger that brings the lands back so the lands are permanently exiled. It's quite nice. We've also got some Council's Judgments as another sort of catch-all removal, and Disenchant to deal with real lock pieces that real decks play. Now let's talk about some matchups, as dismal as they may be. First up, Grixis Delver. Not too bad of a deck to face against. If we can get down a suppression field early to be able to stop Deathrite Shamans, we can pretty much lock them out of lands with the rest of our search prevention effects. Young Pyromancer is a problem because triggered abilities we don't really have a way to stop other than killing the Young Pyromancer. True Name Nemesis, also we don't really have a lot of main deck answers for that, so it's a tough one to try and erase. For sure, bring in your Back to Basics and Parallax Tides, because Mana Denial is very good against Grixis Delver. Next up, let's talk about Miracles. Miracles is a pretty tough deck for us. They don't rely a lot on non-basic lands, they usually flood out on lands eventually and can pay for things like Suppression Field all the time, so we don't really have a whole lot we can do. In general, you want to try and make sure you can stick down a Notion Thief early on, since they do like drawing a lot of extra cards, either with Portent or Ponders or Brainstorms. With Meddling Mage, you'll want to make sure to name and treat the Angels, because there's not really another way to deal with that other than Force of Will, and try to blow up Search for Azkantas and Jace the Mind Sculptors as you can. Definitely board in Council's Judgment, Meddling Mage, and Disenchant for this matchup. Lastly, we have Storm. Oh, Storm. Storm is not terrible for us. We've got a lot of ways to slow down or prevent them from tutoring with Infernal Tutor, but if they're going for the Ad Nauseum route, that's a little bit tougher. In general, you want to make sure you can get a Notion Thief and a Suppression Field as soon as possible. They're the strongest working lock pieces that you've got against them. And in the board, definitely bring in Tormod Script and Mana Mazes. So I think Esper No Fun fails for three main reasons. Main reason number one, the lock pieces involved are really, really soft. A lot of decks can either delay fetching, or can pay the extra mana to fetch, or have counter magic to counter stifles when we try to fetch. It's not actually that punishing. 
especially after the first game when they know to maybe keep a more mana dense hand it, since we're going to essentially be playing land destruction against them. Secondly, the balance of the types of lock pieces we had didn't match up with what a lot of decks were doing. A huge majority of the things that we had for lock pieces were really just mana denial, and we only could deny mana primarily through blocking fetch lands. So, not a lot of decks rely on that, and if they do, again, they act smart in the next game and they don't keep fetch heavy hands and instead keep other land heavy hands. Thirdly, there isn't really a win condition in the deck. My thought initially was, okay, all of our lock pieces are on creatures, which we eventually just beat face with them. Sure, that'll be fine. Turns out it's not. Especially because everything's on creatures, almost everything's on creatures, and creature removal is really prevalent in the format right now, your creatures are going to get destroyed anyway, and that means you lose your threats and your lock pieces. Real bad overall. That said, I did learn a lot from building this deck, and I hope going through these problems can help me and other brewers out there avoid them in the future. Always make sure that when you're checking the sorts of threats and lock pieces you want in a deck like this, that they match up with what decks are actually doing. Now, that about wraps up this episode of Fringeworthy. I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe if you want to see more. If I get to 100 subscribers, I can actually get a custom channel URL so it doesn't look like garbage whenever I try to share out my channel. That is my number one goal right now. I should, like I said earlier, be back in about a week talking about the deck I took to GP Seattle this year and competed in the main Legacy event. It's a really great video, I'm really excited to talk about it, and even the week after that I've got another video right on the back burner, so it should be out real soon. So please subscribe for more, please leave deck suggestions in the comments as well, I'm always looking out to try some new spicy decks, so please send them my way and I hope to see you in a future video. Thanks everyone!